The crown image is supposed to look mirrored because it represents two things. First, the crown at the bottom signifies David's kingship. It is buried under this rich dark blue line to signify a laying down or a burial of David's crown so that he can fully recognize and honor God's authority and kingship. There's lots of texture and individual brush strokes throughout the middle. They were painted to look like they were moving upwards. So the whole time I'm painting, I'm just this constant like upwards motion and then you know you quickly go back for more paint and then just just more. I did this because I wanted this to look like the praise of many many people. I wanted this to both remind us of the 30,000 with David as he brought back the ark and of us as the church and how special it is when we collectively offer praise to God. So David's laying down of his own stature and his own kingship um, and being able to acknowledge that it's the Lord's that should be honored is really the main uh, expression here. This is an effort to remind us that we can have undignified gratitude towards God, where we put our own interests aside and our praise is never too much. This one was really fun to make. I actually think that this one was my very favorite. Each one of the circles here represents a person. In the story of the 10 healed of leprosy in Luke, uh, Jesus heals 10 people and only one of them returns to offer thanks to him. So when Pastor Tim spoke to this on Sunday, um, he really talked about exactly what I hoped the image would express. And it's that all 10 of them received something from Jesus, but the, the one that came back, he received something bigger, something, something different, something more. That's why the color red bleeds over into the leper that is close to the red circle, which represents Jesus. Something to note about the texture here is that each circle kind of has its own swirl around it uh, that I created with brush strokes. They're pretty individual when you actually look at them on the canvas, but the circle for the leper who, re who returned to Jesus, uh, it's completely overtaken by the circle that Jesus is in. It doesn't really stand out individually. So lastly, there's a little bit of detail in each circle that I really love. I painted these textured strips of craft paper and I cut them and I pasted them on each circle. The nine circles have these placed so that it looks as though they're facing away from Jesus. But both Jesus and the leper who returned to him, uh, they're positioned to look as though they're facing one another. I think a beautiful lesson contained within this story is that there's always more for us when we look to Jesus. I used so much paint on this one, like so, so much paint. So this one, uh, the concept for this painting was the most difficult for me because what I originally painted, I ended up not liking. I actually ended up, I ended up hating it, so I changed it. Uh, what I originally had was, I wanted to use perspective in it because I felt like the verse that says the first will be last and the last will be first, I felt like that was really good imagery and I wanted to use it and the way that I wanted to express that was through perspective. So when I started, I had a lot of lines in the background that I was using with different colors and um, I, I didn't like it because oddly enough, it distracted from the image of the scale and so I completely changed what I did. So I totally scrapped it and I painted right over it. Uh, and if you look closely, you can still see some of the brighter red that peeks through, um, which was the main color that I originally started with. Uh, so there's these thin dowel rods that make up the straight lines on the scale and I really liked how they raised off of the canvas and also they emphasize just those straight balanced lines in this image. So the purpose of this image was to remind us that we can have undistracted gratitude no matter what others receive. That's why the scale is perfectly balanced even though one side is clearly very full and the other side is empty. I didn't even use texture on the empty side of the scale because I wanted to emphasize the emptiness of it. So sometimes when I get distracted by comparing what I have or what I can do to what others have or what others can do, uh, I start to feel like what I have just isn't enough or like it's nothing compared to what, what they can do or what they have. And I think that's what the comparison trap, uh, it does. It creates an emptiness. I'm glad that God is the one who balances the scale and not us. That no matter what we receive, we have a reason to offer gratitude to God. 
whatever is on the other side of the scale, metaphorically, it doesn't even 